Hello everybody, this is the Aid of Root Circuit Python Weekly for July 16th, 2018. I'm Scott. I'm one of the folks that Adafruit pays to work on CircuitPython. Uh, CircuitPython is the is a version of Python that runs on embedded hardware. It's based on MicroPython, and we've built on that to try to make it easier and easier for beginners to get into uh, coding with hardware and Python. Um, we do this meeting every week at Monday uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, we will change it if it's a U.S. holiday because a number of us are in the U.S. Uh, so join our Discord, and on our Discord, we'll have notifications on if we've changed the meeting time. Um, you can join our Discord by going to adafru.it slash Discord. That's the short link, and that will get you in there. We're only usually in the voice chat um, during the meeting, but we're also in the, uh, the text chat most of the week, so you'll be able to check everything out there. Um, everybody's welcome to join this meeting. Um, the meeting is four parts. We start with a stat state of CircuitPython, which is statistics and in, in general direction of CircuitPython. We follow that up with, um, <laughs> hug reports and, uh, hug reports is a chance for everybody to say thank you to other folks for, and for the work that they've done. Um, we do it in a round robin style. So I'll start and then kind of call on people, uh, as we go along. Um, we'll then do status updates, which is, uh, done in a similar way where we do a round robin, but we'll talk a little bit about what we've been working on and what we plan on working on in the coming week. It's a good way for everybody to stay in sync and understand what everyone else is doing. Um, if you're just, uh, new to the meeting and lurking, please let me know. Um, I know a couple of you already said that, uh, we'll basically skip to you for the round robins. You'll just be able to, to observe the meeting instead. And then uh, lastly, we'll get into this, uh, kind of our discussion in the weeds section where we take on longer form topics that we, that came up earlier in the meeting and talk about that. So as you go through hug reports or status updates, just mention that, hey, like, hey, in the discussion section, I want to talk more about X or Y, and uh, we'll take it down as a note. Um, we now have a Google Docs that is running the notes. Katni has been helping with notes because my hands have been hurting. So uh, anybody who's interested in that can follow along. I posted the link a little bit earlier, um, but everybody's welcome to help with notes and, and take a look at that. Um, yeah, so uh, these meetings are recorded. Um, so be aware that you are being recorded. They are posted to YouTube on uh, the Adafruit circuit or on the Adafruit YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit. Uh, they're typically available same day. Uh, the link is also also posted in our Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, you can join that at adafruitdaily.com and get all the latest news. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I'll I'll be taking time codes and and uh, the the recording also has um, notes with time codes as well, so you can skip around. Um, so that's what I'm typing. And you'll hear me ask people to slow down or uh, speed up to match that. Um, OK, so state of circuit Python. Um, I run a script every night. It goes over uh, kind of the, the general uh, health of the project in terms of numbers. Um, so first, for pull requests uh, in the last week, um, yeah, uh, Noe is re recommending uh, pre-recording this. Yes, but then I would have to edit it in. Um, which I am quite lazy at. Um, 17 pull requests merged uh, from seven different authors. Arturo, uh, the, uh, the Kitty, who's uh, Mike Barella, Dan Halbert, Hotak, uh, Carter Newsom, Katney, and Jerry. Thank you for those seven authors. And we have four reviewers. Um, again, we always like to have lots of reviewers. So if you've uh, changed some code before and somebody else has changed it, please drop in and chime in and let them know how they're doing. Um, we have eight open pull requests. Three of those are on CircuitPython, and five of those are on libraries. So uh, please take a look at the notes and, and see if there's one that you can help. <laughs> um, Issues-wise, we have 139 open issues. In the last week, we had 10 closed and 11 opens by eight people. Um, so we're right about uh, kind of keeping up with the, the incoming issues, which is good. Um, I think this... we. We've definitely migrated to having more pending issues and pull requests on libraries. So 
it would be good for people to take a look at those and and let's get those wrapped up um last week released uh 3.0 stable which is super exciting and we'll talk a little bit more about that later but uh since then uh as of last night we've had 723 total downloads uh which may not sound like a lot but um it is actually quite a lot for example uh, the release candidate we did, which was released, I think, about the same amount of time, but it was marked as pre-release, only got 209 total downloads. So we're definitely on pace to get uh, a few thousand downloads of 3.0, and then we'll also get 3.0 uh, shipping on hardware as well. Um, in the notes, we do have some uh, lint checks on the libraries. Uh, I won't go over those. Uh, if you're curious, please let me know. Um, so if I had to summarize in two sentences, uh, in the docs, I just did it as 3.0. Uh, 3.0 is stable, and I just want to thank everybody on that. Um, in fact, I'm just going to do it right now, or I'll do it in hug, hug reports in just a little bit. Uh, basically, 3.0 is stable. Everybody should be using it. Um, let's try to get everybody off of 2x um, so that we can focus on supporting 3x. It's, it's a better version of CircuitPython. I mean, that's that's our goal. We always want to make it better. Um, and so 3.0 has been a long time coming, and uh, we're there. 4.0-wise, um, uh, we have some more concrete plans uh, that we can talk about later. Um, okay, so uh, that is the, kind of my rambling on where we're at. Um, hug reports. So I'll take a time code. And... Uh, I'll start off, um, just kind of use it as an example. Um, I just had uh, kind of two quick two quick ones this week. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to say thanks to Jerry uh, for his continued uh, debugging and fixing of issues in the libraries. Um, Jerry did a couple PRs in the last week, so I really appreciated that. And uh, specifically, I also wanted to point out that he pinged me on a review that I hadn't done for like six days. And um, I want everybody to know that if you have a, a pending PR that hasn't gotten looked at, please, please, please do ping me. Um, I'm pretty good about keeping up to date with the ones that are on the CircuitPython core repo, but I'm less good about the ones that are on libraries. So if you've done a pull request to a library and it's not gotten looked at by anyone, please reach out to me or any of the other CircuitPython helpers to get a review and get that checked in. Uh, we don't want to wait too long before uh, we get things looked at. So Jerry, thanks for being awesome and doing that. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad I finally got to it. Um, second, I wanted to just uh, do a shout out to Arturo and Tack and and Jerry for the great work that they've done getting the NRF stuff uh, going and really cool. I last week I got um, the NRF fifty two build going on on the development kit board uh, using CDC and mass storage through the user port. So that was. Uh, that's a huge milestone. Uh, it's still rough around the edges, but it, getting it working is like so much of the battle with that. So having the CircuitPython workflow with a Bluetooth enabled chip is super exciting and and uh, more of that will will come. Um, now, uh, so that's that's for me and I forgot to take a time code um, for that. So I'll also cover uh, hug reports from folks that said that they were lurking. Um, I'll just cover those right now. Uh, or, yeah, I'll just say them now. Um, thanks to Katni for doing the notes. They're already in here. Um, so Andon uh, says, sorry, time code again. And it says, uh, group hug as always, Lady Ada and John Park for the fun unboxing, <laughs> in parentheses, fun boxing, question mark, of Ada Box 8. Uh, JP did a great presentation. It was great to be able to chat with Lady Ada about things both relevant to the box and otherwise. Um, Hakuza Tuna, uh, who's also in chat, uh, says, hugs to everyone for working so hard all the time. Uh, and... Sorry, time codes. Um, three bits is lurking. Okay, so uh, let's go around. And, three bits. Uh, I put a hug report in though, just now. Okay. Okay. Uh, three I'll bits. Copy it. Yep. Uh, three bits says 
I guess this would be a group hug for everyone for keeping their eyes on the low floor part of an educational project, which has the potential to be low floor, high ceiling. It is really easy for developers to get up wrapped up in the high ceiling stuff, which is much more fun. Right. Um, thanks. Yeah. I mean, we're all about making it easier to get people <laughs> into the basics uh, rather than worrying about the really advanced stuff. Um, and we're also very fortunate to be kind of a, a child project of MicroPython, which is really focused on the high ceiling stuff. So uh, really good to be a compliment to them. And they've done a great job doing the more advanced things. Um, so if anybody is looking for that, uh, that's a place to, to do it. Um, OK, uh, Brent. Are you around? You want to type in? He says his mic is borked. We're going to miss our dose of factory sounds. All right, Carter, why don't you go while uh, Brent types? Sure. Uh, basic group hug, of course. Okay. And then uh, one to Deshi Poo for the final review of the ADS 1x15 ADC stuff. It happened right after the meeting last week, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, Katni for a good double review and merge on the HT16K33 stuff, which I'll talk about more in status. Okay. And uh, happy late birthday to Scott. <laughs> Not that late. It was only yesterday. Um, thank you. Um, okay. Uh, Brent typed in for his hug report, um, hug report to me, Tan Newt for PyPy help and, uh, Jerry Ann and Dave Assels for finding issues with the Adafruit IO Python library. Um, okay. See Grover. Hugs to the CircuitPython team for 3.0. Upgraded about half a dozen projects without any issues so far. Nicely done. Hugs to the Adabox team for an awesome and action-packed 008. JP's unboxing video was very well done, professional and engaging. Special thanks to Lady Ada for sharing her engineering thought processes and philosophical approach. Okay. All right, Dan. Are you having mic trouble too? You look unmuted, but you're not green. <laughs> this unmute keeps going on and off. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I, I imagine it's the same issue with Discord that that I hit. All right, Dan, we'll come back to you. Um, maybe try in the settings. There's a audio subsystem box. I moved it from standard to experimental and that changed the drop down a little bit and, and caused it to work. So um, we'll skip Dan and we'll do Dave. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, yeah. Group hug to everybody uh, as usual and specifically to the three O team. Um, I've been really enjoying it, uh, especially on the M4 boards. It's pretty awesome. Great. That's it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Dave, do you want to do hug reports? Hear me? Yep. Oh, it wasn't letting me unmute. Uh, I can hear sorry, you now. I've It's going crazy when it comes to audio. Anyway, um, <laughs> I've, congratulations on the 3.0. I had a slight chance to look at it. I'm in the middle of my emergency ma massive data center moves because of one shutting down, and this is the first time I've even had a chance to glance at anything else for the last mm -hmm. two months. Oh, wow. So I'm still in dope getting clusters and things set up. So I'm mostly a fly on the wall right now. But oh, and by the way, happy birthday, Scott. Thank you. Uh, hope you're not like me at the age where you don't want to ever come ever say the number. Yeah. I'm happy to get older. They just years just start going by faster when 
you as you approach 60. <laughs> totally. I believe that. With, you know, emergency data centers being closed, the fiber out of political issues, mm -hmm. um, I'll actually be able to start looking at this again and I'll also how to integrate some of my IoT stuff into it. Awesome. Yeah, Brent's doing a lot of IoT work, so uh, that should dovetail nicely into what you're working on. Nobody knows what I'm working on because I've never had the uh, an opportunity to be able to show it off with right. both data centers that the one has <laughs> closed down or will be shut down at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. You know, the two that are replacing it, hopefully I'll be able to get the back end back up and running and everything deployed where it left off. So I've just kind of been there with my hands tied for the last month and a half. Well, keep working hard. I'm I'm sure you'll get through it. Doing IoT stuff? Who is? It's, like I said, I've been, yeah. Uh, Brent R. at the very top of the list of folks. Yeah. I should probably get with him offline and have an idea. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to type any more time. But just ever publicly announce this. It's a completely different approach to IoT. It's not, hmm. you know, looking at data acquisition. It's more thinking about distributed circuits and everything working hmm. together. Interesting. Well, yeah, I'm sure I, I'm sure they'd love to hear about it. Okay, so skip me on the other stuff. Okay, going around, I'm going to try to listen and catch up while I do ridiculous amounts of work. Awesome. Well, uh, good luck and stay sane doing the ridiculous amounts of work. Fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Dave. I either show up next week or from the loony bin. Ah, <laughs> uh, you'll be back. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Um, okay, I'll read out Dan's. He's he's having Discord trouble like I just did uh, before the meeting. Um, Dan says, uh, restarted Discord, no effect. <laughs> was working before. Uh, hugs to Jerry and Katni at all who found the GPIO pull issue at the last minute last week. Uh, that was the last thing we fixed for uh, 3.0. Uh, Dan, thanks for fixing it. Uh, Dan also says, hugs to TAC for doing massive NRF merge to master. Um, Switch to PTT, which I don't know exactly what he means. <laughs> Push to talk. Ah, okay. And uh, hugs to Arturo also for all the NRF work. Uh, cool. Thank you, Dan. Sorry, Discord's having trouble. I don't know what the deal is. Um, Jeff Epler, are you around or are you lurking? Okay, just lurking. And uh, status update. So we'll we're still in hard report. So we'll we'll save that for later. Uh, Jerry. Uh, yeah. Well, happy birthday, Scott. And um, thank you. And, and I'm gonna repeat the the hugs to Arturo and uh, Hatach um, for all yeah. the NRF work. And and it really is fun to have the uh, the MSC and the UF2 stuff working on the uh, PK board now. Mm -hmm. um also just uh, to to adafruit for the for the crickets they're um, really having fun with it with mm -hmm. them. really uh is a, a nice nice toy and uh brent for uh uh the aio stuff this week lots, lots going on there so good stuff all around awesome thanks jerry uh katney yeah so hug report to uh carter and radomir who both have been helping me with um, troubleshooting my Odroid Go. I, I finally heard back from their engineers and I have to send it back. <laughs> um, and hug report to uh, Hukuza Tuna, Phil, for letting me talk out some issues I was having with a new library. I managed to figure out the problems um, and get the library working, uh, but talking it out uh, was a huge part of figuring that out. So thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, Mike, are you lurking, or you want to do hard work? No, I'm here today. Sweet. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Um, happy birthday, by the way. Um, Thank you. We could we could all try to guess your age, but uh, 
Uh, I don't think we have prizes. I like, could uh, I, I could narrow it down by saying that I needed a, an extra bit in the number. That's the nerd in uh, me was like, oh man, I need another bit bit for my age. Factor of two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, a uh, hug to uh, Brent. Uh, uh, I'm just going over. He's got a new guide on uh, Adafruit IO use uh, uh, with Arduino at this point, but uh, um, they've been working really hard over at AIO, and uh, um, there's good things uh, afoot. And uh, uh, Hug to Dan. We were going over, um, I think it was this weekend, uh, Cricket and Feather. And um, use of NeoPixels with Cricket and Feather is a little different than using it with Cricket and Circuit Playground Express. So there's a new guide coming out um, on making NeoPixels light with the Cricket boards uh, hopefully soon. And, uh, and that'll have all the the circuit python and make code uh code to get uh all your projects lit up awesome oh wait yeah so okay so those are all hugs pretty much <laughs> yep two hugs and and then the community too um thanks everybody um i want to say for the the python on microcontrollers newsletter um our subscription rate jumped up 12% last week, which is like unheard of. <laughs> um, it wasn't, you know, it's not like it was 10 and it jumped up, you know, to 12. It it, it went up, it, it's just, what, over a couple thousand? I don't know, it, it, it's, it's a significant number. But uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Python for microcontrollers newsletter, it's spam free. You know, opt out anytime you want. We don't use your name. We don't do it for anything other than sending you the newsletters you want. You can quit at any time and you won't be bothered. There's no, won't you come back or anything type thing. It's very low friction. And uh, you can sign up at adafruitdaily.com for, for the newsletters you want. So um, we encourage you. There's some good Python stuff every week. Totally. That's what I'm doing after the meeting. Um, cool. All right, uh, Nis. Yeah, it takes a second to switch over. Can you hear me? Yep. This is like the Brady Bunch. I'm looking up there at Mike. Hi, Mike. Uh, this is a hug report for you um, <laughs> for doing the uh, the analog panel meter clock guide quite a quite a while ago. I didn't realize you were writing guides for that long and. Uh, Really helpful and uh, eye-opening because I had no idea. Uh, I don't know why you could do that with a panel meter, and I love my analog meters. So thank you. Awesome. Uh, all right, uh, Noe. Hello, group hug to everybody, and happy birthday to you, Scott. Thank you. Um, Old Crow, do you have any hug reports? I know you're usually lurking. All right, we'll we'll skip to Radimir. Radimir, are you around? Radimir is typing. Group hug and congrats on three point oh. <laughs> Who did Smarky the Blue Smoke? Sparky this Blue Smoke Blue Smoke Monster as a response to three Huh? It hasn't blown up yet. All right, uh, Summersoft. Usually typing. Summersoft says, uh, three bits and Larry Fast for looking at and bringing some documentation issues up. Uh, happy day for their continued push on getting SAMD sleep working. Oh, good point. Uh, Dan Halbert and Tan Newt for keeping up with the forums. I keep meaning to check more. Uh, group hugs beyond all that. A uh, non-circuit Python hug to the makers of aloe vera gel. Beaches have a knack for making life colorful and slightly painful. <laughs> I could totally relate to that. Um, awesome. That is hug reports. Thank you, everybody, uh, for that. Let's keep moving. I know we're a little behind schedule. Um, 
So we'll do uh, status updates after I take a time code. Status updates is a section to just talk about what you've been working on and kind of what you plan on working on in the upcoming week. It's a great uh, way for people to uh, just coordinate on tasks. And if you get hung up on something, somebody might be able to give you a pointer to, to get past it as well. Um, for myself, uh, I will take a time code and cover this. Uh, one, I wanted to um, kind of do a, a call out. Somebody want to look at the Circuit Playground um, issue 37. Um, I've been meaning to and I haven't gotten around to it, but basically what the person's done is they've um, they've actually calibrated the light sensor of a Circuit Playground to a separate reference one that they had. and they, So they give you different math. Um, I think the goal here would be to split out light from Lux um, and make it uh, match the design guide. So that's um, kind of a status update is that that's on my ballpark on my radar, but I kind of just don't have the time to do it. So if somebody wants to pick that up, that would be awesome. Um, the other work that I've been doing was uh, redoing or adding the ability to, for us to actually uh, change the heap allocation from run vm run to vm run so in your uh boot.py for example you could say like i don't need a huge stack so let me let me shrink the stack and then that would give you more heap space um having the ability to kind of dynamically do that would also allow for you to do things like in the boot.py you can give it a different usb descriptor um for example if you wanted to do a second usb cdc communication back or you don't want it to show up as a USB HID device, you'd actually be able to change kind of the default uh, USB descriptor with that um, dynamic allocation of memory outside of the uh, the VM itself, um, which make, makes it longer lived than like an, one single reload. Um, that's my main thing. I want to get uh, the first PR out. Uh, it's almost done. Just have some stack stuff to tweak. I want to get that out probably later today or t early tomorrow, uh, because on Wednesday I go to Michigan, uh, kind of for vacation. So I'm out Wednesday through Sunday. Um, uh, actually going to meet Katni in, on Friday, which is exciting. Um, so I'll be in Michigan doing, uh, family stuff there. Um, so I won't be online. I'm not even going to bring my computer. As you know, I've been having some issues with my hands and typing. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to take a break, not bring video games or my computer. So, that will be fun and I'll get a lot of reading done. Um, and then that leads me right up to next week. So uh, not a whole lot for me. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I will now read uh, Andon's status update uh, he gave earlier um, after I take a time code. Uh, Andon said earlier, uh, I soldered so many TFTs they are annoying because so few of them sit perfectly on the first try. I had 25-ish battery packs to solder on, and then I have to hot glue them in place. Then I can put the actual programming on them and call them done. Um, for background, uh, Andon sells ba badges for um, for different conferences, and uh, he does hand assembly for some of that. So that's, that's what that's pertaining to. Um, all right, let's let's go around. Um, three bits is lurking, so we'll go to Brent. And I think Brent said. Yeah. So um. Yep. Oh, now you have factory noise. Yay. Yay. So um, the past week, um, thanks to Scott, I didn't really get to do callouts before. I don't know if you read what I wrote. Um, probably did though. Um, thanks to Scott for um helping me put um, Adafruit I/O on version two on PyPy. Um, there's still some weird issues with it. I'm working through bugs today. Um, running on the Raspberry Pi. So it's not working on 3.5, which is what ships with the Raspberry Pi. And hmm. I'm trying to figure out what's the issue with that. Something hmm. of how requests work. Um, this upcoming week, uh, depending on the speed that Mike and Lady Ada get it out, uh, we have two guides on digital output with uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, Adafruit IO, and CircuitPython, and then digital input. And then probably later this week, towards next week, I'm working on analog input, analog output, and PWM, and then servo. So all of the Adafruit 
IO guides are slowly moving to CircuitPython. Awesome. Yeah, and big thank you to uh, Jerry N for finding issues and reporting them like hours after I released them. <laughs> it's super great. It's Jerry's specialty. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay, uh, we'll go on to Carter. Yeah, the uh, ADS 1x15 stuff that was done, that was, if anyone remember that conversation we had last week about the polling loop having mm -hmm. pass in it versus time.sleep. Mm -hmm. So that was very simple, just change to time.sleep and all good. And then I got was able to have some time to spend on the HT16K33 stuff to add a few missing um, support for a few missing products. And I can sh do some uh, show and tell here. Ooh. So now we've got support for that little guy. Nice. And support for this big little guy. <laughs> so the bicolor, which somehow also shows three colors, <laughs> segment bar graph is good to go. And mm -hmm. then that larger uh, segment display, which is kind of a weird arrangement. So right. I did it per the, uh, I, I threw up some suggested API stuff in the discussion. It seemed like no one had issues with it. More discussion was about why that display has the arrangement it does mm -hmm. versus anything else. But so what? It is what it is. And the, the, uh, the PRs are in there and they're good to go. Awesome. Great work. I, I think, think I, need to up, I need to update maybe the guide. There's a CircuitPython guide that went over the matrix uh, like the eight by eight matrix and stuff. And maybe I should update that and also add in these two things. Yeah, totally. It's always good to get people aware of what's going on. And then other than that, I think that that repo is more or less done for now. There is the outstanding issue we had about renaming and rearranging stuff. Yeah. But that's kind of cosmetic. So mm -hmm. I'll just kind of let that sit there for a while and think about it. And we'll just we'll just see what happens. Yeah, it sounds good. It, we're still kind of with the e-paper stuff. We we had more discussions about like what do we want for rendering and stuff, and we still haven't kind of like worked on that and figured that out yet. So, right, I think right. it's fine. So since it's not critical to anything specific in terms of something broken, it's it's okay to just leave that open for now. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. That's all I got. Thanks, Carter. Uh, I'm gonna take an interlude uh, before C Grover and just uh, uh, and Toll dropped in and uh, pointed out that the release candidate for uh, Mu is out. So 1.0 Mu 1.0 release candidate one is out. Uh, so for you guys, you all should uh, take a look at that and and try it out. Um, Mu is the the IDE version of CircuitPython in the sense that they're very uh, and told is very explicit about um, making it easy for beginners and not kind of supporting all of the experts. Just just support the beginners, um, and then the experts can use the other tools instead. Um, so everybody take a look at that. Uh, great work, uh, Nicholas, on that. Um, OK, uh, C. Grover. Uh, says. Uh, time code <laughs> other than converting a few existing projects no new cpi work this past week still working on pcbs and front panel designs for three euro rack synth projects and learning about the key features of keycad uh, as a result next week will involve uploading gerbers to oshpark and ordering a stock of newly filled plastic bags from digikey awesome and uh note on keycad uh they tagged 5.0 stable um, so everybody sh should keep an eye out for the next stable release of KiCad as well. Um, it's much, much better than 4.0. So take a look at that. Um, yeah, I. that's why my hard disk was full is they have this like universal binary now. And I think I downloaded all the 3D models. Um, that's why it took up so much space. Um, okay, Dan, are you working now? Can you hear me now? I can. Okay, I switched to a, a different computer. Okay. <laughs> this is Windows comes through. So <laughs> uh, I, I released 3.0 uh, last Monday night. Um, yeah. Thanks to everybody. And then since then, um, I've been working on some support things like a newer version of the Windows 7 drivers. And I'm merging in um, 
changes from recent changes from MicroPython into um, the master branch of CircuitPython. And uh, just a lot, a lot of miscellaneous things. But um, hope to finish that up and then we'll get to really working on the NRF 52. I'll, I'll join in with the other people who are working in on the NRF 52 port. Okay. Okay. That merge is awesome, though. That's always good to do, and it can get rough. It's horrible. <laughs> I just don't say that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's another discussion of how long we should keep doing that. Um, but I think, I mean, we're still getting good stuff from MicroPython, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, we, we might start merging maybe just the the core part or something, if we can figure out how to do that. I'm not sure how, if we can or not. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks for doing that, Dan. I appreciate it. Um, all right, Dave. Okay. I've uh, been working on a few things. Um, most applicably here, um, I mentioned that the book we decided not to do and is going to take those content ideas and do them as guides. I've started mm -hmm. doing that. Um, the first one rolled out late last week, I think. Um, and it's, they're basically, uh, to help people that have started, you know, programming more or less programming in general with circuit Python mm -hmm. and essentially, you know, they go through the beginner phase, they do the, the simple little projects and then they're at the stage where they can write something more elaborate, especially with circuit Python three and the M four boards. Um, you can actually write some big programs in there. That's what I'm finding so exciting about those boards and mm -hmm. CP3. Um, and so this series of guides, um, the goal is to introduce them to some of Python's, especially CircuitPython's capabilities that you know are beyond what you can fit on a, a trinket or even a, a you know one of the M, one of the other M0 boards. Right. So that's. That started. That will continue. Um, I've started to play around with a, a project using that new um, e-ink display, mm -hmm. the Square e-ink display that just came out from Adafruit, uh, and hopefully that's going to be CircuitPython based. That's my goal. Awesome. Um, so we'll see how, see how that goes. Good. That'll be a hot off the press driver. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of looking forward to doing that. That'll be fun. Awesome. Okay. Right. Thanks, Dave. And yep. uh, I realized I was being ambiguous. <laughs> uh, but other Dave, uh, actual Dave in the text chat is lurking for status updates. Um, and Jeff Epler is lurking as well. So we're on to Jerry. Oh, uh, I'm on mute. Yeah, I, so yeah, I can hear you now. Lots of and lots of different stuff going on. Uh, played a lot with the NRF 52s earlier in the week. Um, yeah, really nice to get the the, the uh, development kit working and that stuff. Um, I've also got a couple of those the, the new little the cheap little dongle boards and it's just trying to play with those. Mm. Looking forward to those coming online. So um, and then uh, finally, finally, I just got the STMP 610 update out and the RFM 69 uh, update done. And uh, do I have to make releases of those to get them out into the bundle? Or? Yeah. Okay, so yep. I'll try that. Okay, and um, then playing a lot with with Blinka, uh, slowly updating all my Raspberry Pis from three point Python three point five to three point six. Mm. Um, seems to be necessary for some of the features, and it takes a while to re you have to you have to actually compile Python on the on the Pi, and it, it oh. takes a while. <laughs> yeah, but um, it is working, and. Um, and then I've just been struggling with and playing with this uh, near pixel brightness in the um, on the um, seesaw on the, the with the, the the feather cricket board ran into a problem. The, the the brightness wasn't implemented, and I I tried a quick a quick implementation and realized it's not as easy as I thought. So mm. <laughs> it's getting there. I have it working, but it can't. The it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't it, it only updates if you update the the pixel. You can't globally update. Uh, the brightness, the way it's working. Hmm. We can talk about that later or some other time. <laughs> cool. Well, that's uh, that's good to know. Um, 
in this world where you have multiple things doing the same or similar APIs, it's going to be a trick to keep them all uh, yeah. kind of in sync like that. I have a couple other cricket questions if, if you want to talk about it in the weeds, but it depends. Okay. It may be today, so we'll see. Cool. Uh, people can, are always welcome. They're like, if you have to go, that's fine. Um, think because we are going to run a little late and then uh, we'll, I'll post a recording so you, anybody who needs to jet at uh, noon my time can can come back and listen to it later. Um, Mike? You gonna skip me? Uh, no. no. Sorry. No. I I I succeed time to, for Katney to get hers in. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Katney was throw it was throwing me off that uh you already had your notes in there. That's that's what I'm claiming. Okay. All right. Um, so I updated the essentials guide for the M4 boards. Everything is set there. The code, the text, the fritzings, um, everything is good to go. So any M4 boards. Uh, you can go to that essentials guide and see how you're supposed to wire it up or how it's supposed to be coded. Um, so that's ready to go. Um, I updated the code of conduct and cookie cutter. So all the new libraries that are created um, will have the new code of conduct. Um, so that's set. I started the process for um, getting the e -ink, the EPD library into um, Travis and read the docs and getting it on GitHub with the code of conduct and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, I worked with Dean on that, helping him with the linting process uh, to get the libraries happy. Um, that we're waiting on some stuff. Um, I started to work on the library for Pixie LEDs. Um, Lamore drafted a rough version of the lib in one piece of code, and um, it took some work to get it uh, to the point where it's it's functioning as a library. There were a few parts of it that weren't quite right, um, mm -hmm. but they are now fixed, so it now works. Um, and I started looking into I2S and PDM in. Um, we're going to be updating the I2S guide with Circuit Python, and then eventually we'll be doing a PDM in guide um, with Circuit Python. Um, so for this week, I uh, still need to do a couple updates to the newsletter. Um, then the next thing I'll be doing is finishing the Pixie library, getting that all set up on GitHub, and um, getting that to Lamore for testing. Um, the next thing I'll be doing is adding CircuitPython to the I2S guide. And then after that, um, we'll be working to get the e-ink guide, or not, I mean e-ink um, repo into into Travis and read the docs once Dean is set with that, because I'm waiting on him to update um, the last bits of, of pylinty things, which is just the doc strings is what he needs to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is um, where I'm at and what I have going on. That's a lot on your plate. Keep up the good work. Thanks. And uh, thank you for pushing the code of conduct stuff forward. I know I dropped the ball on that. That's all right. We, we stuck through it and we got it on. And I know um, Summersoft has been working on getting that a way to automate that into all the new, um, all the new, all, all the libraries, not the new libraries, the current libraries. Yeah. Um, yeah so that'll totally. be really good for us to be able to get that updated. And <laughs> I didn't do a hug report. Thank you, Summersoft, for that. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that PR is open in the tab in my browser. Uh, so I mean to look at it. I'll definitely look at it before I peace out for sure. Although maybe it's better to have somebody else look it over instead. Um, since I won't be able to get back to you. Um, okay, Mike. Uh, I've got to run real quick, but uh, um, there are more guides coming out. Um, so keep an eye out. Um, we publish them on the social media and uh, on the blog. And uh, again, we're we're aiming at the community. I mean, hopefully, you know, if somebody says, "Well, I don't, I don't know where the SPI pins are," you know, we can that will have the guides be a little bit more um, helpful as far as pointing out the features that you want to find as you're gaining knowledge on these things. So. Right. Um, suggestions welcome and um, and keep an eye out and then thank you everybody for for jumping in and doing PRs and looking over the code because that's what helps generate more better documentation for everybody else very much so awesome thanks Mike and keep up the yeah. rock and the guides yeah all right uh, Nis. 
My usual splashdown. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, I'm looking at Seesaw, Dean Miller's code. Mm-hmm. Um, thinking about compiling uh, a simple text interpreter based on that code base simply because it's so much smaller than the circuit Python code base. And I want to try a project completely outside of the Arduino IDE using the, um, I call it the EABI compiler. I don't really then know the name of it. Yeah, just the ARM compiler, ARM DCC. Yeah. So that's that's basically it. All, everything else is, uh, you know, notes on the page here. I, you don't want me to read them out, do you? Oh, no, you're all good. Okay, great. Um, and uh, doing bare metal sounds really fun. Yeah, it does. It's I, I'm I'm a little bit excited, and uh, <laughs> you know, learning Git is is just freed my mind. Yay! we it's amazing. We've converted you. Yeah, it's amazing. So thanks for the help on that too, by the way. No problem. I'm okay. glad I'm glad you got through it. And Cadney's guide's really good, and I've linked somebody last night to it. So. Yeah, once you use it a lot, it's you start to recognize what the proper command lines look like. You may not know what sequence they go in, but right. you recognize their form. That's a start. So that's been, yep. So thanks. Thank you. All right, Noe. Hello. Um, give me one second here so I can paste the notes. No problem. Scott. So doing a lot of 3D printing and testing of different mount things for the Cricut board. Mm. Uh, the the one we're really liking is a little adapter for Lego bricks. Um, kind of prototype quickly with Lego bricks. Hmm. Um, let's see, the other one is added more CAD files to GitHub. Uh, folks are uh, requesting step files, mm-hmm. various parts. So I put them up on GitHub. So if anybody wants those. Or wants to contribute, uh, you can do a fork thing. That's pretty much what I got going on. If anybody has any parts that they need modeled, like uh, any of the, the parts that we don't have, um, let me know. There's probably a way to request it somehow in GitHub. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it's like an issue, right? A ticket issue thing? Yeah, yeah. You can do just file a new issue and say, like, hey, for this guy, I'd love that this part. That would work. There you go. All right. So that's pretty much what I'm working with. Awesome. And if you ever need Git Git and GitHub help, uh, we're all happy to help with that. Yes. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Happy to see it end up there. I think people are enjoying having access to all of that in one spot. Okay. uh, Old Crow's lurking, so we'll go to Radimir. And Radimir was text only earlier, I think. Maybe he's busy. Um, SDW is lurking. Uh, Summersoft, why don't you go ahead and type in as well? I know you're text only. Radomir, I'm he- hearing like blips of you. Can anybody else hear him okay? No. All right. I think Discord might be having trouble too. All right. Well, um, let's just keep moving. If folks uh, come in later, that's fine. Um, okay, so the last that was uh, status updates. Thank you, everybody. And we have one more. Do we have one more? Yep, three bits. Uh, actually, edited the the notes for us. Um, it, okay. Three bits says I think that I will take a look at the read the docs documentation and try to increase new user navigability. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh. That would be good, but some of that might just be pointing people back to the learn guides because the read the docs stuff, we're really trying to just be the API reference. Um, we we don't need that to be everything for everyone. Um, but pointing, separating people out and pointing them in the right direction would be really nice. So um, that would be great. Okay, let's uh, move on to the discussion in the weed section. Um, 
3943. All oh, my keys are in different spots. Um, first and foremost, uh, I, I think I will just go first. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, 3.0 to a debrief and, and what we all thought of it. Um, so think on that. Think of how you how you all experienced the 3.0 release process and what you thought was good and bad. And uh, oh, there. Yeah, my text chat is behind. Um, it just lurked for me as well. Okay, yeah. So uh, think on the 3.0 debrief and let me read off these other status updates um, that we just got. And, and then we'll go into the 3.0 stuff. Um, Radimir said, I prepared the prototypes for the CircuitPython badge to pass them on to PyCon UK organizers next week at EuroPython so that they can give them to the people interested in testing and developing for them. We decided we will postpone their use on the conference to the next year. Uh, this weekend, I realized a way to make a minimal version of a standalone device compatible with the Pew Pew Featherwing with just four components that will be cheap enough to make in-game in -game making workshops. PCBs are on order. I will need to write a C module for CircuitPython similar to the GamePad module for driving an LED matrix directly with the GPIO pins. Uh, projects at Hackaday 159733. Uh, will, the link will be in the notes. Um, and then that's Radimir's update. Uh, Summersoft also chimed in and said uh, frequency in module is dormant this past week. Little Leslie Amp, still no movement beyond random thoughts. Uh, Adabot library patching, working on a script has been PR'd. Could definitely benefit from further testing before it gets used on the live repos. Um, yeah, I, I glanced at it. I need to look at it further. I'm not super worried about it because the way that we should have the patching do is we should have the patching just automatically create PRs and then we can just manually merge those um, just to double check everything. Um, okay, so thank you everybody for that. Um, let's circle back to 3.0 and I'll actually, I'm gonna just take a time code in case people wanna skip to it. Um, So first and foremost, I just wanted to, to read the contributor list for 3.0. Um, 3.0 itself started, as far as I can remember, like back in like August of last year. Um, it started around the, the SAMD51 development, and I started it kind of in private r really early when we knew the chip was coming, but they hadn't actually announced it. So uh, we had a particularly long uh, release cycle with it, and... Kind of the way that CircuitPython's been going is the odd ones are pretty slow and the even ones are pretty fast. So like 1.0 took a long time, 2.0 was pretty quick, 3.0 took a long time, and we're hoping that I'm hoping that 4.0 will be quick again. Um, but we just had like way more people than we had had before involved. So I just I'm just gonna read off the list um, that was on the on the release uh, notes just in case people didn't see it. So. Uh, thank you to everybody who used, tested, contributed, helped out, and participated on GitHub, sprinted with us at PyCon, and chatted with us on Discord. Uh, we had Lady Ada, Dan Halbert, Tanu, Katni, Microbuilder, Arturo182, James Devine, Tralamaza, Hatak, Glenn Rub, Sedacious, Deshipu, T. Decola, Mr. McWethy, Willing C, Summersoft, Dean M, uh, 1278, Jerry Needell, Stu Meister, Sigafoo, Sprint Rue, Carter Newson, Process 1183, and an A, Ashley, Adam Wolf, Diastles, Hakuza Tuna, Criticus Maximus, Nis, Bravo Delta, AJ Nis, Wolf, V Sparked 38, J Epler, Notro, Seagrover, Lark, Lars, uh, KS, West FW, R Hooper, K Holly, Godly Geek, Builds a Tongue, Matland, Wicked Chicken, Margaret, SDWJ, NJ, uh, Entol, S. Conaweg, D. Cloud, Nick Zoic, Mike Barella, Josh Les, Seven, Papa Habla, Hot Carry, Bill R. And from PyCon Sprints, Dylan W., Anders David, Dylan H., Adam, John, Chris, Lady Red, Craig, Aaron, John, Boris, Drew, and Catherine. And surely we're, we, more we have missed. Uh, join us on Discord chat to collaborate. Um, I know that was a big long list of just random names. Uh, and sorry to anybody that we missed, but. Uh, the, the key here is that like more and more people are being involved in uh, CircuitPython project and, and what that entails more broadly. Um, and I just want to keep it going. I want to thank you all who are on this meeting, who are listening to this afterwards. 
um, this definitely works. Like this part of our release process of having lots of people involved and really spending the time to get people involved is uh, working really, really well for us. And we need to continue to do that. So uh, when I look back at 3.0, like, um, and the previous releases, 3.0 is really kind of the time that we've grown into a larger community and had a more diverse uh, participation in, in getting things done. So thank you all and let's keep doing it. Um, it's super valuable. Um, I thought uh, in general, 3.0 took longer than I would have liked, but um, we were we had to wait for hardware at the same time, so that was it was somewhat okay. Um, I think for 3.0, I would like us to be further ahead of the hardware. We're, or for 4.0, like we're target, targeting the NRF52840, and those chips are just starting to show up. So uh, I think if we could be really focused on adding support for that, that would be really good. Um, and... What was I thinking? Uh, I liked, I liked the way that we structured the three O milestones, where we had an alpha, beta, and a release candidate phase. Um, we definitely spent a lot of time in alpha, and we shipped some boards with the alpha releases on it. So I think there was a mismatch between um, stability and the and what we were calling it. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. But the like stabilization process went uh, really quickly because we had kind of stayed stable, which is a, a totally good place to be. Um, and I've since broken out 4.0 into this alpha, beta, and uh, final kind of phases as well, where like alpha is make sure that the core workflow works, beta is making sure that all existing APIs work, and then final release is adding anything extra in that we wanted to. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my hot take on, on how I feel 3.0 went. Um, what does everybody else think? Jeff is typing. I think, I think another side to having the alpha beta and release candidate phases was that it gave us it gave us tangible milestones. Um, had we gone with no alpha um, which we were going to initially, that beta would have been a very long slog. Mm -hmm. um, and instead we had smaller chunks um, that were more well-defined uh, because we knew alpha was, we have all of the you know functionality that we had in 3.0 is now there. Now we can move to the beta phase. Um, you know, beta is bug fixing and so on, and then our release candidate phase, and all of that went very quickly, I think, because mm -hmm. of the fact that we spent so long in alpha and beta, but I really think we probably would have been a lot more frustrated and burned out mm -hmm. if we hadn't had the the smaller milestone. So I think that was another really positive thing that came out of that, and I think that that's really important, and I'm really glad that we're going with that again for 4.0. Yeah, good. Um, Jeff Epler in the chat said, I came in real late in the process, so it was always seemed real stable to me. Also, I was using the better tested M0 boards, I think. Um, Radimir says, apart from some short times when it was completely broken, <laughs> the master seemed to be pretty stable to me. Um, yeah, and there's a shout out there worthy of uh, just thanking Jeff Epler again for adding the ESP8266 build to Travis as well, because that was one of the things that I constantly broke. And so having that in Travis is preventing that as well. I also want to say it was one reason it was so long is that we were actually completely replacing the underneath layer, the the library that we used for both the CMV 21 and 51. And so with like almost a complete re-implementation mm -hmm. and a lot of, there were a lot of issues with switching that library too. So, I mean, we did sort of did, we, we should expect that the, the next bunch are not going to be nearly as bad basically. Right think that it was it was it was almost it was almost a complete re-implementation right and yeah. how, how do we feel about going with asf4 like sh looking back on it do we think it would have been better to do as like make add asf3 support to the samd51 
which was an option, or just doing uh, raw register SimSys level stuff instead. I think a lot of the stuff could have been done, the simpler stuff could have been done with raw registers. And if we wrote a wrapper layer, uh, maybe that would have even made it easier mm -hmm. or something. But I don't, I don't think we knew that in advance. And we sort of didn't know how kind of not well structured a lot of, or the emphasis of ASF4 on doing everything at compile time, which was a real, mm -hmm. a real headache. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we thought it would save code space. I don't think it actually did save any code space or it, it, I'm not sure that it saved all that much code space um, mm -hmm. in the long run. So I, I think, you know, for, for, for devices that are hard to set up, um, yes, maybe there's some virtue to using the library, but in many of the cases in ASF4, the difficult devices were not um, well implemented in the library anyway. So it didn't really help. <laughs> So it was sort of, it was like, oh, well, I'll just use the library here. Whereas ASF3, had been, it was a number of years old and really had been, yeah, it had, it had been well tested and, and right. many books fixed in it and so forth. So we were on the bleeding edge in terms of ASF4. It was not an easy thing to use because it just keeping up to date with it, with it the process was kind of horrible. And I don't see that improving. And I think it would yeah. be probably good to move away mm -hmm. from it with the SAMD chips. Yeah. yeah. And how does that inform our kind of this thing that we talked about that we haven't made decisions on when to do is is when to switch away from the ASF for USB stack? Um, I I think the question is, I think we need to test tiny USB mm -hmm. and see how well it works for our purposes. And I think, but I think if we, we now that we have something that works, you know, we can leave it in until we're, we're confident about the other thing. Whereas right. in the other case, we couldn't, we, we, we had started going down a path and it was, we couldn't, we had to go down that path because there was no ASF3 for, right. for, for Sandy 51. But in this case, we have a fallback. Mm -hmm. We didn't have, we had no fallback for this 51 before. Right. Yeah. And I kind of implicitly, this is changing the subject a little bit. I, I didn't actually call it out, but I've basically said that 4.0 is the Bluetooth stuff now. Um, and I think if anybody disagrees with me, please, please raise a stink. But uh, my impression is that like TAC, Arturo, and, and soon to be Dan are, are going to push it pretty quickly um, along with Jerry's testing. And so I think, I think we're going to see 4.0 go pretty quick. Um, with that and the hardware is starting to come out um, and so I think now is the time to really focus on it uh, there was some discussion with the game stuff um, and I'm the kind of the way that I'm thinking is that like I'm hoping to be able to continue the game stuff and the prerequisites for that myself but uh, only kind of manage the 4.0 stuff rather than being uh, on the critical coding path myself so um That'll be an interesting thing for me to basically work ahead into 5.0 uh, potentially, or in the, some other ways it's orthogonal where it's not hardware support necessarily. Um, so it doesn't really matter what, where it, when it lands. Um, but I think, I think 4.0 is, and the NRF52 stuff in, in particular is uh, close enough on the horizon and interesting enough and has enough people behind it to, to be that next focus for us. One thing I want to say is sort of aside, an aside about the NRF hardware is that the new chips are out, but we do not use the bare chips in the NRF 52. Mm -hmm. We're going to use a module, I believe for basically RF certification reasons. So we have an there's an additional step in the supply pipeline that we have to wait for. Mm -hmm. So um, just like don't get everybody get get their hopes up because now <laughs> you can buy fifty two eight forties on DigiKey. It's you need right. to buy you need to buy a module mm -hmm. that contains the RF components also. Yeah, so th I think more broadly for people who are wanting to start to help with four O, like we had a lot of help from people who were doing testing and stuff and. 
one of the early milestones for 4.0 is to be able to do all of the normal CircuitPython stuff with the normal CircuitPython workflow uh, on the NRF52840. So um, if people want to get into that, please reach out to us. And we don't quite have prototype hardware yet, but it shouldn't be too long. So Jeff Epler asks, uh, do you see any directions to improve testing during 4.0? Um, Dan, do you want to mute if you're not going to say anything? OK. I'm just getting an echo echo from you of myself. It's throwing me off. Um, I would say uh, testing's tough. Um, I know that both you and, and Notro, Jeff Epler and Notro, have, have done some work on that. Stefan did as well. Um, I don't think I I would put any of it as a prerequisite to 4.0, um, but having that continued work is valuable. Um, hearing feedback on where we really need the testing is valuable too. I actually uh, broke Adabot, which is like just a computer at my house here. Um, I broke the Adabot update, so I fixed that over the weekend. I forgot to say this in my status update, but I also... Uh, revived the Rosie CI stuff, which is just uh, taking uh, fresh builds off of Travis and loading them onto boards and running, uh, running just our test suite on there. I keeping it up continuously has been really tough. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's any more reliable than it was. Uh, one thing I want to try is I actually want to try a different USB hub because um, I'm not sure that the one that I'm using is that reliable. Um, but there was also a bug, a bug in it too, that I fixed over the weekend as well. Um, and it's also only running M0 boards currently, but I would like to get to the point where we're running M4 and NRF on there as well. Um, so yeah, I think that is something I would like to, to do myself for 4.0, but it's not super urgent, but I'm willing to hear to feedback, uh, otherwise on that. I hope that kind of answers where I'm at on testing. I mean, it would be nice to even just have some basic hardware reg reg regression testing on, um, like, is does I2C work? Mm -hmm. Does SPI work? Do, do GPI work? GPI work? Because that would have caught some bugs that we had. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be on all the boards, even a, a simple, if we just did it on a feather or something. Right. I think we don't necessarily have to test every pin on every board to catch a number of significant regressions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did kind of have this idea of doing like a feather wing hat or something or, a, or like a, a testing feather wing that would just like connect up pins in a standard way so that it could do a self test like that. Um, maybe that's worth doing or at least to worth defining and then you could manually do it. I don't know. But yeah, open open the suggestions for sure. Um, yeah, the two or three feathers boards. Yeah, the... Yeah, I forget what those are called. Doubler? Doubler and tripler. Right. Yeah, so open to suggestions. And, and I think one other thing that would be nice about that is if people, I, I like the way that Notro is going in the, the sense that it doesn't require anything extra. Like if we could just have a like plug the board in and run this command and it runs it on the board um, so that more people could do it. Um, although automated is nice too, but like being able to manually run tests like that would be good as well. Yeah, totally. Automated's good if people aren't diligent about it. Like I'm, I tend not to be. <laughs> uh, but yeah, being able to do it locally too. So, um, yeah, totally open to that stuff. But it's not something that I've sat down to do myself. But I think that as the project gets bigger, we're gonna have to rely more and more on, more and more on testing and to make sure that we don't regress stuff. 
All right, uh, that's enough on on three O. If people have more ideas, or three O and four O, um, we can talk about it next week, um, or just bring it up in the text chat. Uh, we're always around to, and we can always um, improve on our workflow and things like that. Um, but I know that we're running later. We're in the second hour of the meeting, and we do have some other stuff that we want to talk about. And we started late, so um, let's go on to Jerry and and the cricket stuff that Jerry wanted to talk about. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and I can't wait to summarize that. This one came out with a uh, with a cricket uh, feather feather wing cricket. Right now, I have a, an M4 Metro M, um, not Metro a uh, Feather M4 Express on it. And some things are working fine. The servo is working fine. I control that. Uh, we've got some NeoPixels on it I was playing with. Um, but I'm running into some trouble with, with trying to get touch working. Hmm. And, and I'm just trying to sure that 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 there, there's no reason for to expect it not to work. Is that correct? <laughs> I'm, I'm finding that when I try a simple touch example, it tells me in one case that the... Uh, the pin, the valid touch pin, and other case, I from the new. Ooh. You, you mean the touches touch pads on the cricket? Right. And it tells me that touch underscore one isn't 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 mind when I when I do that uh, under under the cricket. So I in, import Adafruit cricket. Um, the cricket library from Adafruit Cricket, and that when I try and run that little touch example, it just tells me it, it's it's the you know touch underscore one is not defined. Uh, uh, it just uh, sounds like you have the wrong library. Maybe so, and that's that. So, to the date is this the version I think I have on this right now is the three dot release. Um, and the but library, if you have, uh, yeah, if you, maybe I have to go up there. I'll check the libraries. Yeah, if the live okay. directory is that live directory was only updated over the weekend, so uh, if it's that's probably it. Okay, on the M4 is it? Yeah, that uh, there's nothing built in there. Okay, uh, I'll play around with that more then. I'll just keep okay. looking at it, and um, and that was the main thing. So okay. uh, I was just just want to just want to make sure that I you know the there in. One of the differences, like we have a Feather M0 Express Cricket build. I assume the only reason you do that is to is for the memory usage of startup. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. want to freeze it in. There's no need to do that on the M4, right? We don't need right. an M4 Cricket build because we can do Okay, so that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, it, yeah, again, it's it's all fun. It's working working really well, but it's running into some little, little hiccups here and there. Yeah, and that kind of that reminds me of the issue that Three Bits filed over the weekend. I think about like it would it should be easier to find all the files that we need to update. Um, and so, if anybody does web development, um, that would be a really great project that we could do with a new repo that is just like some page where you select which board you have, and then it gives you. Um, thanks, Carter. Uh, like just a web page gives you a grid of all the boards and then you click a board and you can have the different versions and the different sets of files that you need for everything. Uh, for example, the Feather M0, you could actually have two sections to it. One that's like, has the Cricut logo. And like, if you're doing Cricut stuff with Feather M0, here's the stuff you need and vice versa. Um, so if anybody wants to do that, that would be awesome. Yeah, although in, in general, if you have an express board, there's really no reason not to just keep the whole library, right? Yeah, I think the bundle would be the same. It's just that the uh, the actual binary that you flash would be different. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, was there any other topics we we wanted to cover, or should I just wrap us up? All right, nobody's jumping in. So uh, I'll do wrap up uh, since folks are, I know we're over time, so uh, folks are dropping out. Um, so again, thank you everybody who, are, who was able to make this meeting uh, or listens to this afterwards. We really appreciate the engagement. Um, this, week, this meeting happens every week at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific 
on Mondays, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, everybody's welcome. You just have to be in our Discord. We will not do YouTube live streams or anything like that. We don't want to just have that side chat, chat going. Um, so if you want to join, you can join us at adafru.it slash Discord. Uh, you can chat with us all week there um, via text chat, but then we do this voice chat every week. Um, the recording goes up on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit, um, along with uh, notes as uh, thank you, Katni. Uh, Katni took again this week, along with time codes, so you'll be able to skip around this uh, hour and 15 minute long meeting. Um, so until next week, uh, thank you all, uh, and uh, have a good week, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.